Well, hello again, uh, everybody. And here's the first of my, and I promise there will be weekly um, demos, uh, drawing, painting, whatever. Um, thanks to everybody who responded to my request uh, for ideas for subjects. I've got quite a few to get at. Um, and here's one of the first ones. I've already done this drawing, um, which is this scene. And I think it's, I'm not certain, I think it's Paddy's Hole. It's, it's a reference picture I spotted online, one of these free sites. I think it's Paddy's Hole in Middlesbrough. If it's not, it's most certainly down in Essex somewhere. Perhaps somebody can correct it. But I just loved the, um, the perspective challenges and the way the way these huts kind of snake off and then there's some some of the landscape in the background um and usually because it's a really nice portrait you see the big sky there i've chosen to do it landscape a5 and zoom in on the huts um for this one i actually drew this with um a unipin 0.1 fine liner but um i'm trying the the if you look these are dark grey um rather than black and they're okay I'm st they're still I'm still like my um the crispness of a of a black line but I'm gonna see how this works. Um it looks like pencil lines but the only thing is you can't rub them out really um and I've forgotten I hadn't finished this odd texture on these. Um, I don't know if you can see it there. This weird texture that's on these. It's like a shingle. So I'll just finish these off. Um, when I did the drawing the other evening, I set myself a strict limit um, of no more than 10 minutes. So that line work, apart from the bits I've just gone in and fiddled with, that line work took me 10 minutes to do because I do feel that with with the recent lockdown and we've all had not many places to go, um, so we've had the luxury of time. I think I've been a bit, I've actually luxuriated in the time and taken a bit longer with, with some drawings than I normally would do. Um, and when I look at some of the stuff I've done, I'm thinking, well, yeah, actually. You know, the, the extra time I've I've got that I feel I can take, because I'm not rushing about preparing for demos and workshops and the like. So the extra time I've got has gone into drawing it. And in some cases, it's kind of erred into the drawing looking and feeling to me overworked so hence this self-imposed 10 minute time limit on this one and i'm going to try and do a similar one um a similar time limit with the uh where are we now with with the colors i'm not i'm not trying to emulate the colors in this in this landscape it looks bleak and wintry which is quite opposite today um, but what I am going to do is put some loose colours and not try not to be too fussed um, if the colours aren't perfect or if they run into each other. Um, so here we go. This is a, a really, really weak mix of cobalt blue with the sky for the sky. Um, and that's all I'm going to do. One pass of the colour is what I tell people at workshops is best rather than go over it. And so that's, I'm just going to leave the, let me move that there. Just going to leave that. Let's see if we can get a bit more light on. There you go. Um, and try not to tease it. It's where it went. So there you go. So that's the sky in and I'm going to work. Um, I think what I'll do is work on the landscape. Um, so... Although it looks quite bleak, I'm going to try and try and brighten up the look of this with this is a mix of this is sap green and some green gold. Um, 
again I'm not being trying not to be too faithful it's a strip of green across there in the field so let's have a look at that and then we'll bring some of this in this is um quinacridone sienna and I guess at this point I'm just trying um, what I want to get is the feeling of almost impressionistic I'm not deliberately there you go look at that see this is what i love about watercolors you do this then you suddenly find a bit of really strong pigment on your brush um and rather than get panicky about it let's bring some of that across there you use it it's um fantastic the way it all blends in so i've watered down the mix there look to get a bit of the paler one and let's have now then where is it where's my dark my dark green of choice which is undersea green these are all daniel smiths um let's put a line of greenery across there not quite strong enough so let's that's neat pigment there there's hardly any water i'm i'm relying on the on the brush picking up moisture uh, from paint that's already down there sorry i'm doing all this off off screen i really should think about zooming out so you can see um see my mixing process my yeah that's a bit there and now you see trying to do it really quickly And it's it's bleeding into the sky but that'll be fine so let's get a bit of this green gold in um there'll be something be a bit more around there in fact i'm using that cheap old brush there which is not helping so let's switch to something else yeah so what i've decided to do and I've just decided this since I started filming, is to almost frame these buildings with colour. Um, and then I think the only colour I'm going to put on the buildings, if we go back to that photograph, if you look, is, is the dark edge. And I've decided that, that the light's going to come from there. It's probably a, a setting sun. And this colour I'm bringing in now is yellow ochre. Um, a bit more of this. Look, neat pigment. Just want to, and I'm following the drawn lines on the thing, but you, I think you can already see. Um, I'm not convinced about these, about this dark grey ink. Um, because the lines are kind of disappearing under the under the washes, but we'll see what happens when the washes dry paler, as they always do. Just add some colour to this. Right, and there's some there. Because if I leave this, there you go. If I leave this um, uncoloured, it's just going to look a bit lost at this edge. And that'll do for the, although they need to perhaps bring some, some darkness down there. Again, undersea green is your friend. And it'll, it should, um, right, that should dry okay, but I can already feel now if I were to colour all of these buildings in fully, I think, number one, they'd, they'd, they'd kind of disappear. And number two, I think the line work would, would, would go. And for me, it's all about the lines. So let's have a crack at just adding a shadow colour on one, on one aspect. 
of the buildings and I'm mixing Payne's Grey with some ultramarine violet. There you go. To get a, quite a nice dense colour, but I'm watering it down because I don't want it to to overpower. So I'll start at the top there. Uh, let's have a look. Shadow on that. Take a bit of paint off. Shadow on there. There'll be some shadow there where there's no line. You see that that kind of works for me because I've I've watered the wash down sufficiently that you can still see that um, that pale grey. So let's put some on these gable ends. There you go. So if, if there's dark colour on that gable end, then there's got to be dark colour on this gable end too. I'll uh, make it a bit paler because it's just that bit further away. Um, bit there, but I think that's that's going to bleed. So let's just, didn't normally do this. I said I was going to leave things alone. Let's take that out. And just put a nice, there you go, that's better. Um, what I have got to hand are these wonderful dot cards, look. Right. Tell them a Yorkshireman, look how lowly stop using them. Uh, from Daniel Smith. And they just work work really, really well for, for doing accent colours. Um, I'll, I'll demonstrate that in a little while. I want to get all this colour on so it's about the same value. Look, there you go. Down there, down there. Along this edge. I'm kind of staying away from there, but I think it's dried all this. I think it's already fairly dry, even though it's quite a cold day today. So, and let's kill this. I'm not sure. It looks a bit like um a clumsy attempt at drawing a fish. So there you go. Bit on there. And then there'll have to be, put a bit more water on the wash. There'll have to be a cooler colour on there. To give some sense and that edge there sorry and along there along there along there so what i've done no i haven't done john um you've forgotten look because i've i put color on there it must also go on these these roof edgings because they're in the same plane as the the one underneath so therefore And that one there and then on that building in the back and there's very little detail on that it's just a suggestion there's windows penciled in there there's something going on there let's let's put some color on these these pipes there must be chimneys just to put and i'll put a tiny bit of color along that crease there i'm not sure there's anywhere and along these ridge these ridges but there you go, that's taken me, what, 10, 12 minutes to put that colour on. Um, and it bears no resemblance to the colour in the original photograph look. But there you go. Um, I'm still not convinced about the grey. Whoops, just spotted a bit there, look. Still not that convinced about the grey lines, but uh, I'm going to leave it here for now. And there may well be a part two of this. Let's put some dark darks on, on there, just to bring it, give some variation and some depth. It's a bit slapdash, but in, in a way I'm kind of, I'm aiming for the slapdash effect because I want it to be loose. Now you see along here, where that's, where that's bled into the sky, um, my OCD is going to kick in, so what I'm going to do 
is embrace that and pretend I meant to do some big clumps of tree all along. There you go. And I shouldn't really be doing this because the wash is still wet, but um, so yeah, there may well be part two of this where I attack it with some more pen or that might be it. So um, thanks for watching and see you next week for another exciting episode of fun with watercolour and pens. See you all later. Bye.